From the man who started Ponzi schemes to the man that made people believe he had a hedge fund worth $64 billion, we even have $180 billion companies that went under practically overnight. So let's begin with number 10, Charles Ponzi. People knew him as the most popular con artist. How did he earn this title? Well, the largest financial scheme he concocted was the one including international reply coupons. Back in 1919, these IRCs could be exchanged for postage stamps. And that's when Charles Ponzi had an idea. He thought he would buy these coupons from Europe, where they were at a discount, and he would bring them to America and sell them at a discount. But there was a problem. The opportunity was so large that he couldn't fund it by himself. Eventually, he started taking money from investors while promising the people their investment would double in 90 days. At first, he paid everyone. The scheme worked like clockwork. Word got out and people basically started throwing money at Ponzi. But buying a million dollars worth of coupons proved to be more problematic than ever. He couldn't repay his investors, but he had another brilliant idea. Why not get new investors that would pull in their cash and pay the old investors with the money from the new investors? He could do this without ever going to Europe. Eventually, there were no more investors he could sell to. The scheme failed and Ponzi was forever remembered as the man who conned millions of Americans and made $15 million in the process. Number 9. FTX Until November of 2022, Sam Bankman Fried was praised as the leader of the blockchain revolution. He made his money buying and selling cryptocurrencies in different markets and then started FTX, the second largest crypto exchange in the world. The money from the investors and shareholders was placed in risky investments, and the company overstated $8 billion in profits and assets. Some argue that this wasn't a classical Ponzi scheme, but more of a fraud or embezzlement. Whatever they said, fraud is fraud. Number 8. BitConnect We all remember that guy that kept shouting, smash that like button just like you should if you haven't done so already. But no, in all seriousness. The guy was shouting BitConnect during the cryptocurrency seminars in front of thousands of people. BitConnect! The crypto token promised investors that they would get 1% daily returns through something called a cryptocurrency trading bot. People were turned into affiliates, recruiting others into this godforsaking scheme. And then, in 2018, the whole thing came crashing down. The value of the currency fell from $331 to $21, which went from a market cap of $2 billion to only $130 million in only six hours. Number 7. Enron With Enron, investors lost a total of $74 billion. Two CEOs and one CFO forever changed the lives of tens of thousands of Americans. Because of the Enron's unprecedented growth, when the stock price reached a high of $90.56, people invested all their savings into Enron. It wasn't uncommon for people to brag that they became millionaires just by working at Enron. But then, in 2001, the growth became unsustainable. The financial crisis showed everyone that CEO Jeff Skilling, former CEO Ken Lay, and CFO Andrew Fastell had been cooking the books and reporting false growth. The company went under. The bragging investors lost all their money, and the CEOs received only 6 and 12 years in prison. Number 6. WorldCom In the 90s, WorldCom was considered one of the largest telecommunications companies in the US, even the world for that matter. As the demand for cell phones increased during the 90s, the company grew at an astonishing pace. As the market became saturated, demand decreased. People weren't interested in buying cell phones anymore, but the company didn't want the stock price to fall, so they started cooking the books. This is when they began listing expenses as investments, and revenues and profits were overstated by $7 billion. But at the 2001 crash arrived, Investors uncovered the bitter truth about WorldCom. The stock price fell from $60 to $1. The CEO was sentenced to 25 years of prison, and many of the employees lost their jobs. Number 5. Tom Peters 
this businessman, or more accurately, con artist from Minnesota, managed to steal $3.7 billion from pastors, hedge funds, and missionaries. What was the ploy? He told people and institutions to invest in his company. He would later buy wholesale merch and sell it to discount retailers. Somehow, he convinced people that he would turn a profit. But that didn't happen. What actually happened was Peter was sentenced to 50 years in prison in 2010. Number 4. Caritas Caritas was a Romanian company that basically said something along the lines of, you give us $100 and we'll give you $800 in just 6 months. With such numbers, everyone in Romania and their grandmas invested their company in Caritas. The company managed to smash that subscribe button just like you should if you haven't done so already. But no, seriously now, the company managed to accumulate $1.257 billion from over 400,000 investors. When the company collapsed in 1994, the owner and CEO of Caritas, Ian Stoica, was sentenced to seven years in prison, but they later reduced it to a year and a half in the end. Number 3. Stanford Financial Group for 20 years, a Texas tycoon by the name of R. Allen Stanford ran Stanford Financial Group and cheated 30,000 investors and another 100 countries to give him $7 billion. Instead of investing the money into certificates of deposit, as he promised, he poured the money into his offshore bank account in Antigua and then bought himself valuable real estate and funded cricket tournaments. That's probably why in 2012, he received a gracious 110-year federal sentence. Number 2. Triple M Triple M was the second largest Ponzi scheme in the world. The company and the CEO managed to embezzle between 5 and 40 million people and stole about $10 billion. The owner founded Triple M during the period of Russian hyperinflation. The company promised to 10x their money in just 12 months. So, if you were to invest $1,000, they would give you back $10,000 in one year. The company went under as quickly as it rose to prominence. For all these examples, we can safely say that whenever someone gives you a guarantee of returns, they're pitching you a Ponzi scheme. Number 1. Madoff The Madoff scheme was one of the biggest financial frauds in the history of mankind. One man walked out of the deal with $20 billion, while the investors lost a fictitious $64 billion. How did this whole thing collapse? Well, Bernard Madoff started his Wall Street hedge fund in the 80s. In the beginning, it was an honest business. The fund was open to big sharks and wealthy investors, which makes it that much more impressive. He didn't fool the average Joe. He fooled wealthy investors who are supposed to know how things work. After the smoke cleared, these investors admitted to being suspicious about the steady flow of income, but they allowed greed to cloud their judgment. Even Bernie Madoff said that the SEC didn't catch him earlier. So how did one man embezzle so many people? Well, he told investors that his hedge fund was investing in blue chip stock and then took part in portfolio hedging by purchasing S&P 500 options. However, the funds didn't exist. And the only reason he was able to pay his investors is because he redistributed the investments from the new investors to the old investors. The 2008 financial crisis showed the investors that the reported $64 billion were practically non-existent. Check out these videos next.